Hello and welcome. My name is Matteo Garbellotto and I'm a professor of forest pathology at UC Berkeley. And today we are in China Camp State Park to talk on how to sample plant material to survey for the presence of a disease called sudden of death. Sudden of death is an exotic disease that arrived in California in the 80s. And when it arrives in a site, it can kill almost all of the oaks in about just a decade. The SOD pathogen was introduced multiple times in Northern California around the greater San Francisco Bay Area and at least one time in Southern Oregon. From these original introduction sites, the pathogen is actually spreading in California and in Southern Oregon. Almost all of the findings of the pathogens are in two different types of habitats, the coastal mixed oak forest and the redwood tan oak forest. The spread of the SOD pathogen is slower during a dry year and it's much faster during the wet year. However, normally in one single year, the pathogen will move just a few hundred yards or a couple of miles. So far, only 20% of the coastal forests that it could inhabit have been colonized by the pathogen. For this reason, it's very important to monitor the presence of the pathogen to understand where it is and which trees may be at risk. The sudden death blitzes are surveys to monitor the presence for the presence of the disease and to identify new infestations. However, these surveys are also important to understand how the disease can locally expand its presence and shrink its presence during dry weather. Understanding how the weather affects the presence of sudden of death is very important to understand the ecology and the biology of the organism that causes it. The SOD pathogen can infect four species of oaks and the related tan oak. However, spread of the disease is affected by spores that are carried by the wind and that are produced on the leaves of two trees. The most important producer of spores is the California bay laurel, and the second most important producer of spores is the tan oak. Because California bay laurel and tan oaks are the two most important plants for the spread of sudden or death, the focus of the sudden or death blitzes is on how to survey the leaves of these two species. California bay laurel, it's a very abundant tree on the coast of California. It is an evergreen tree, which means it carries its leaves all year round is characterized by a smooth bark, by the presence of leaves with a smooth margin and a waxy coat, and uh, it's very easily identified by crushing its leaves. What I have here in my hands now is the tip of a branch of a California bay laurel. As you can see, the leaves are waxy, they have a smooth margin, and the most important trick to be sure that you actually are looking at a California bay laurel is to pluck a leaf and to crush it in your hand. As you smell the leaf, you should be able to smell a very strong aroma that comes from the extractives and the chemicals that are present in the leaf itself. Once you identify a California bay laurel, you will be looking for symptoms of sudden oak death. These symptoms are not very easy to see sometimes because as little as a single leaf may be infected by the pathogen. Sometimes up to 50% of the leaves can be infected by the pathogen, but there is no way of telling how many will be infected. And so it's very important to carefully observe the tree in order to determine whether a tree has been infected or not. Luckily, most of the infections are usually on the lower branches. So we don't have to worry about looking up on top of the tree or even a mid height of the tree, just focus on the lowest branches of the trees. It has been determined that at least 20 seconds may be necessary to identify the typical symptoms of sudden of death on a California bay laurel tree. That is 20 seconds for each side of the tree. So in order to determine whether infection is absent from a tree, a person actually has to observe each one of the four sides for 20 seconds. The lesions um, that I am showing here on this leaf are the typical lesions expected when the sudden or death pathogen infects a California bay laurel tree. As you can see in this branch, just a couple of leaves may be infected, and this is why careful observation is necessary to absolutely be sure that we are able to identify the infection if it is present. 
Infection by the sudden death pathogen is characterized by a dead portion of the leaf, which normally is brown if infection occurred in that year, or is gray if infection occurred the previous year. And the dead area on the leaf can be seen whether we turn the leaf around. So if we look on both sides, you will be able to see the brown zone that corresponds to the area of the leaf that's being killed by the sudden death pathogen. The margin of the lesion will be irregular, so it will not be a straight line, but there's going to be curves on the margin. And there is going to be a yellow halo or a yellow zone that borders that infection margin. Sometimes we're going to, have, we're going to see small dots on just above the main lesion, and those small dots correspond to individual infections that occurred when droplets accumulated during the night. Tan oaks are not true oaks, but they're very close relative of oaks. And they're evergreen trees that normally grow together with redwoods, or they can also grow in pure stands mixed with Douglas firs and madrones. Tan oaks are typically have a pyramidal shape, and uh, they are characterized by the presence of leaves, sometimes very large, with a serrated edge. And during the fall, the typically hairy acorns can also be observed. You will be sampling relatively small tan oaks uh, because it's a lot easier to reach the leaves that may be infected. So do not spend too much time looking at very large tan oaks. Infection on tan oak leaves looks completely different than infection on bay laurel leaves. In the case of tan oak leaf, the infection is normally found on the petiole of the leaf, which is the connection between the twig and the leaf, and then the, the uh, infection follows the mid vein on the leaf. Because of this particular pattern, normally you will observe a brown area around the petiole, and the brown area tends to continue along the mid vein. In infected leaves, normally the typically green mid vein will become progressively brown as a result of the infection. Because the mid vein is the main source of water for the leaf, normally you will observe a drying of the leaf as a second step of the infection by the sudden of death pathogen. If you see dead spots on the leaf that are not associated with the mid vein and with the petiole, do not sample those leaves. Those symptoms are caused by other insects and diseases. When you find a California bay laurel or a tan oak that displays the typical symptoms that we just discussed, then go ahead and sample that tree. You should collect at least five leaves to show the symptoms, and you should put all of the five leaves inside a single small envelope that is contained within your collection packet. Once you've sampled a tree, place a little bit of a flagging tape on the branch of that tree to make sure that you remember the tree has been sampled. If a tree you're sampling is going to be resampled in the future, or you want to make it a permanent sampling tree, then you may want to tag it with an aluminum tag and an aluminum nail. The tag should be placed on the north side of the tree. It should be at about four feet from the ground level, and there should be a little space left in between the head of the nail and the bark of the tree. If you need tags and nails, please ask the organizers at the end of the training meeting. After you place the leaves within the envelope, make sure that you fill in the white data sheet that is included within your collection packet. We'll talk about how to fill in the data sheet in just about a second. However, before you sample another tree, make sure that you walk at least 50 or 100 yards. There are two pieces of information that may be a little bit harder to obtain and are very important. The most important piece of information is to provide us with the exact location of the tree that you're sampling. The exact location is determined by the latitude and the longitude of the location in which the tree is standing. There are different ways to determine the latitude and the longitude in a location where you're standing. The application SODMAP Mobile also provides you with the, the latitude and longitude. The application is free and you can download it both from Google Play and the Apple Store. In order to uh, use the application SODMAP Mobile to determine your latitude and longitude, you will need to tap the risk button. When you tap the risk button, the latitude and longitude of your location will be displayed on the 
lower portion of the screen. Alternatively, if you're familiar with a GPS device, you can also use such a device to give you a much more accurate uh, latitude and longitude of the location in which you're standing. There is an additional way, potentially a little bit less exact, to determine your latitude and longitude after you complete your collection trip. And this additional way includes the use of Google Earth. Open Google Earth and zoom in on the location that you surveyed until individual trees will be clearly visible on your screen. Place the mouse over the tree that you sampled and read the latitude and the longitude at the bottom of the screen. Transcribe those exact numbers in the collection form. Go to www.sodblitz.org to download a PowerPoint that explains how to use Google Earth to determine the locations of the tree you sampled after your survey collection trip. Another piece of information that is required in the data sheet and that may be quite difficult to obtain is to determine whether there are any oaks that have died recently or that are bleeding within 30 yards from the tree that you're sampling. A dead oak uh, may be quite obvious if it still has its leaves on the branches. If you see a bleeding oak or a dead oak within 30 yards, then tick the appropriate box in the datasheet form. If you place the metal tag on the tree, please remember to fill in the number of the metal tag on the form. If you've been surveying an area for more than 10, 20 minutes and you observed no sudden or death symptoms on bay laurels, it may be a good idea to let us know that the area doesn't have sudden or death. You can do this by using a pink form. When using a pink collection form, please do not collect any plant material. Do not place the pink collection form inside a small envelope. Place it instead inside a large collection packet. Most people collect symptomatic leaves from four to 20 trees on a single trip. However, you will be looking at many more trees during your walk in the woods to survey for sudden or death. As you look at trees and as you walk, please write down the number of trees that you looked at that didn't show any symptoms and the number of trees that you looked at, including the ones that you sampled, that did have some symptoms. At the end of your collection trip, please, on the front of the packet, write down how many healthy trees you looked at and how many trees with symptoms you looked at. Of course, we're talking about bay laurels or tanooks. Once you've completed all of your collection, you've placed all of the symptomatic leaves inside the small envelopes with all leaves from one tree in a single envelope. You filled in all of your data sheets to go inside each one of the envelopes and you've wrote, you've wrote down the number of trees that you looked at, both with symptoms and without symptoms. Then your survey is completed. Make sure that you seal the packet where you put all the envelopes uh, with, the, with the leaves and make sure to return the packet in the collection bin within 24 hours from collection. You should be informed about the location of the bin uh, during the training session or personally by the organizer of the sudden death blitz. The bin will be shipped off to UC Berkeley at a specific time, one or two days after the training session. So make sure you return your leaves before the cutoff time for shipment. Remember to never leave your collection packet in the sun or inside a car that's parked in the sun. And also make sure that you, take, you don't take home with you any plant material, any leaves, or even mud on your shoes because both leaves and mud could actually help to spread sudden or death in California and elsewhere. Results of the salt blitz will be published in October on two websites, www.sodblitz.org and www.sodmap.org. Go to these sites to find out the results of the survey you participated in and also to find out the dates of very useful seminars that discuss the implication of the results and discuss how to manage the disease. From all of us at the UC Berkeley Forest Pathology Lab, thank you very much for helping us with the survey of one of the most serious threats to native oaks in California and Oregon.